Hey everybody, welcome back. This is video 10 of the year I wish I could erase. So just to kind of recap a little bit, I- Can I introduce why I'm here? Actually, yes. This is my husband, Dean, who was my wonderful caretaker throughout my entire process of before, during, and after getting my cancer. So I don't know what I would have done without him. Okay. So just to recap, I have been told by my oncologist in my last appointment that now that my second tumor that was found was HER2 positive, I need chemo. So the month of June is just kind of crazy and we are doing a lot of research and a lot of investigation and getting a second or third opinion and finding out why do I need chemo? And then this is where my husband, Dean, too, he's with me at my appointments with the oncologist kind of stepped in and kept asking, go ahead and tell them what you were asking. Well, I just couldn't understand why, why we had gone through, why Tammy had gone through what she had to have all the tissue removed when that was supposed to be the end of it. And they had gotten, lymph nodes were clear, everything was removed, the, um, the, uh, what's it called, with the space around, the margins were good on everything. Yeah. Everything that could have possibly been bad was removed from her body. Right. And now they were telling her that she had to go through a year worth of chemo and treatment, her septum, and it just didn't make sense. She, she's the healthiest person I know. Um, so, yeah, you are. And just to be clear, because the tumor that we're talking about had been removed from my body. And that's why I think we were so confused as why am I getting chemo? It's not in my body anymore. You took extreme measure, double mastectomy. Right. So she had said because her two is so aggressive that there could have been some cells that have already escaped because it was invasive, even though it was only stage one. That's how aggressive her two positive breast cancer can be. So at that point, we knew pretty much what we had to do, but really in one of our appointments with the oncologist, she had said to us, do you remember, you don't have to do chemo, but if, if this does ever come back, it will be stage four. So I just want to make that clear to you and to everyone out there, like there, from stage one, if the cancer comes back, there's no, you know, now it's oh stage two, it's stage three, it's, it's stage four. So, so now that, that I know that chemo is my, in my plan, I'm also going to multiple doctor appointments and I go to the plastic surgeon every week to get my expanders filled. So I wanna explain a little bit about how that works. So when you have your mastectomy, the breast, uh, not the, uh, the uh, plastic surgeon comes in and places expanders in first before your implants. And you have to get these slowly filled up with saline because they are stretching the skin because you've lost some skin now. And if you fill these expanders up with too much too soon or too quickly, it's very uncomfortable and very painful. So you go about every week, maybe every two weeks, and you get only a certain amount of fluid injected into the expander. And I know it sounds really crazy because there's a, um, Oh gosh, what is that it called? Was a you know, magnet. There's like a magnet with the, you know, with a needle where goes the port in. Was. The port, yeah. right? That that's I'm trying to think of that word. It was crazy. And so there's a it's a long needle, and you're thinking, this long needle is going to go inside me, but you have no feeling at all. So it's it's just, it's not a big deal at all. There's no pain involved in that process as far the as the needle. Was like self sealing, so the self sealing. Yeah, it was so weird. Yeah, so the needle goes in, it injects the fluid, the needle comes out, it seals back up. Then you go back the next week, let's say, or two weeks, whatever it is, whatever you have in your plan, and then you get filled up more, and you keep going back until you get to the size that you're comfortable with and you're like, well, you tell the plastic surgeon like, okay, that's good. I'm done. And I wanted to get the expanders out as quickly as I could because they're, it's like a hard kind of, um, balloon, I guess, kind of thing. Yeah. And it they were shifting, they were shifting off to my side. So I couldn't actually put my arms down completely by my side. 
So I'm thinking I definitely do not want to have these things in my body now for over a year until I finish all of my treatment. Please let me get these out first. Let me have my implant exchange surgery, finish my reconstruction and then start chemo. So I am pushing things because I am um, delaying chemo starting. And also we had a little family vacation planned mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know he's wondering too, like how is she even going to, or any of us even going to enjoy this vacation? Yeah. But I did. You did. I mean, I really tried it to put nice. it behind me and I think we had a good time mm -hmm. and I just tried to not think about what was coming because when we got back the, the next day, I had my implant surgery and that surgery is so much easier than the mastectomy. Don't get stressed out about that one. The worst part again were the drains. It's not 100% guaranteed that you'll come home with drains, but I only had to have them that time for four or five days. I had it on a Monday and then basically this guy was calling the plastic surgeon, right? Or she was gonna rip them out herself. And begging, she's gotta get these drains out because they're just so uncomfortable. And then Friday, I was back working again. Yeah, see. So I have my expanders uh, replaced with my implants. And then exactly two weeks later, I start chemo. So stay tuned and I'm gonna talk about chemo and what that whole process was like in my next video. Thank you so much for being here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you so much for your support and for caring to even watch these videos and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for supporting her. I appreciate it too.